I hope you're really excited today because we have a very special guest joining us today. Um, oh, I am Nick, by the way, if you haven't known. Uh, I'm on the programs team, so I, I try to make a lot of things work, and hopefully it's working out for you. Uh, with me today is Rebecca. Um, Rebecca, you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. If you came last week, I was there too. So good to see you back. And if not, welcome to the live class number two. Yeah, hi, Rebecca. Um, and also with us is Sadie. Sadie, you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Sadie. And then, of course, our special guest for today is Anjali. Anjali, you want to say hi? Hi, how are you guys? Hi, Anjali. But yeah, uh, welcome to this live class. This is the second live class, like, like Rebecca mentioned, and today we're going to talk a bit more about how to, how to find and identify a problem you want to solve, something that you really care about. And Anjali, if you want to take things over, I say go ahead. Oh, wait, I have one quick oh. technical note. Just want to make sure, so just so you all know, we are streaming this live on our Facebook page also. So if anything happens to your internet, and your connection is really bad. You can also watch there. You just won't be able to like chat with everyone. All right, perfect. I'll take it from here, Rebecca. Um, thank you so much, both Nick and Rebecca, for that fantastic introduction. Um, I am super excited for today's live class. Um, so I'll shoot my screen up here in a sec. But um, I basically here I'll give you the little rundown for what to expect today. So essentially, I'm going to start out by talking about how to find problems in our community so that we know what to solve. So I'll talk about my personal experiences. We'll do a couple activities. Um, and most of all today, I just want to kind of get to know you and your passion, which does take too much sense to solving problems, but you'll see how it does in the near future. Um, beyond that as well, I'm also, um, going to show you a little bit more about time management tips and tricks, especially because that is you know, so important when it comes to meeting deadlines as well. Oh, in the meeting, meet. <laughs> okay, but, uh, and then after that, ooh, what was I saying? All right, time management. And then beyond that, I I'm also going to talk about mentorship, finding ways to talk to mentors, collaborating with mentors. But overall, it's just going to be a very fun and, um, hopefully entertaining experience that you take a little bit of something away from. So I'll start out by introducing myself. So my name is Gitanjali Rao. You can call me Anjali. So if you take off the first three letters, I am 15 years old and I'm an innovator, author, and promoter of STEM. I work to solve problems in our society. So I looked at the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. Um, I looked at opioid addiction and I also looked at cyberbullying and currently I'm looking at parasitic contaminants in water. And recently my work has expanded to global outreach. So I'm working with students just like you guys across the world and um i really love teaching and sharing my knowledge of stem so um yeah hopefully this is going to be a fun experience for you guys but why am i here so i want to share my experience since i was also part of technovation girls for the past two years maybe three um but i love to just share my tips and tricks to get started on your innovation journey but i can tell you this journey of yours for the next couple of months is going to be something you will never want to take back a second of it'll be the most fun experience of your life so i'll kick it off with kind of my process of innovation which is observe brainstorm, research, build, and communicate. And the way I remember this is organic bananas regularly belong in cake. I don't know. It's always just something that I use. Um, so hopefully you guys, you know, this is just a very, very broad process that I carry on with me. But the very important thing is that innovation isn't linear. So it doesn't always go in order. It doesn't always work perfectly. And it doesn't always happen this way. But this is how I like to base it upon. And this is how I like to approach it. And I'm not going to get too much into the details of this process, especially just because we're going to be focusing on this one step of the process today, which is observe. Um, so finding problems in your society is one of the biggest things you will, you know, you will want to hear about, especially because 
know, problem solving and just finding problems as a whole has always been something so difficult for me, especially because you feel like there's so many big problems. But as someone who's doing this by themselves, it is so difficult to, you know, tackle that problem. So let's go here. I'll tell you a little bit about my work and how I found out a problem, and then I'm going to have you guys do a couple of chat activities beyond that, too. I see some things rolling in, which I'll get to in a bit, too. So, um, perfect. So, this is my device, Tethys, which helps to detect lead in drinking water faster and more inexpensive than the current tools. And it's based on something called carbon nanotube sensor technology, and it sends all the data to your mobile phone on an app that I created. So that sounds very confusing. Basically, how my inspiration about this came from is learning about the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. So there were so many kids my age who were essentially drinking a poison every single day. And that's just kind of what inspired me to do something about it. But the more important thing is how I found out about this problem. So the Flint water crisis is such a huge problem. Leaded water is something you see across the world. But I found one specific instance and found one specific thing that connected to me and my passions, which was, you know, detection and, you know, picking up things in water or even I just loved learning about water as well. So I'm going to start out with the very, very broad question of what do you like? And I'm going to have you guys put that in the chat and I want to see things rolling in. I will keep up. Don't worry about me. But put in what do you like? What do you like to do? What are your goals? What do you like to play with? What are your favorite foods? Whatever you like, just drop that in the chat and it will make no sense, but it's fine because this is what innovation is. Artificial intelligence in ecology, love that. Ice cream, parks, art, Legos. These are all some really good ones. Oh, I see writing, books, reading, music and books, anime. <clears throat> We're seeing music again, dancing, ukulele, reading, baking. I love baking, sketching, science, um, let's see, anime, games, sports, sports. I love technology. I like technology too. Um, arts and dancing, science. Okay, great. So keep them coming. Swimming. I'm still reading on the side here. Oh, I see dancing in all caps. Very enthusiastic. Um, artificial intelligence, performing. AI. I love you guys like AI here, which is super cool. It's one of my biggest passions as well. So, um, yeah, this is exactly what you guys should be doing. And, you know, if you have even more, keep dropping them in. I want to give you guys this time to reflect on what you love to do, what, what are your goals and what you like to look at. Um, so we're going to basically, I'm going to show you how you can create a problem out of something that you like. And it's something that I have struggled with but it's something that now I have understood how to do. So I still see them rolling in and um, please continue to have them come in. I love reading these. So we're gonna do a little example here. So this is the observe stage and I put in three things that I love. So I love dancing, but it hurts to do ballet and point shoes all day. Second, I love cheese, but it spoils fast and a lot of people are allergic to it. And I love soccer, but I tend to get hurt pretty often. So we're going to do sentences like that. We're going to take the first part, say but, and talk about, you know, that second part. And that second part might take you the time to, you know, think about that and understand what to put there. But the goal is you want to see a correlation to something you love and something you think you can be fixed so that you can love it more almost, if that makes sense. So um, I still see things coming in. Maybe let's do... Ooh, let's have people raise their hand and maybe say this out loud now. So I will give you an example here. So I, I see a lot of people said um, baking here. So I love baking, but it's sometimes, um, it, sometimes the recipe doesn't come out exactly the way I want it to. So that's my example. Does anybody else have a, you know, something they love, but then a but after it? Raise your hand or just, yeah, raise your hand um, on the Zoom tab and I will find you really quick. There we go. Okay, I see a couple coming in here. I like reading, but I have a hard time getting personalized recommendations. That's a very, very valid problem. And I definitely suggest you keep looking at that. I love to read, but once I start, I can't stop and I end up wasting a lot of time. 
So great. That's a fantastic idea as well. Um, I see. Oh, I see Halia raising her hand. Yes. Wait. I love writing, but most of the times I'm too lazy to type. I'm too lazy to write. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good problem. Great. So that's a fantastic sentence there. So it honestly can be derived in your own way. So basically what I would love for you guys to take away from this is understanding the idea that you can come up with a problem based on something you love to do. And now, how do we know what to solve in that? So I really like the idea. Oh, there's a couple more. I like speaking. My pronunciation isn't good. That's a great one. And I love collaborating, but I'm way too nervous. Ooh, great. That's fantastic. I know collaborating is definitely a hard process. And I think that that's a fantastic problem to look at. I love dance, but I'm shy of dancing among everyone. That's a great one, too. And I love learning instruments, but I don't have to, like tuitions or um, like teachers to go to near my house, which is also a very valid point. So now we're going to think about this very, very big umbrella of a problem that we have. So I'm going to share a whiteboard really quick. And we're going to break down a problem. So I really loved, oh, let me pick one out from here. I love the one that says, I love reading, but I have a hard time getting personalized recommendations. Well, let's try to create a group problem that we want to solve. So I'm going to put up a whiteboard here. And um, here, I'm going to, here we go. This is like, this is the first time I've used a Zoom whiteboard. So here we go. So I'm putting up a little line here. And basically, here we go. <laughs> basically, how we're going to use this is how we're going to create, this is going to be our main branch. So what is the problem that we came up with? The problem that we came up with is personalized recommendations. <clears throat> Okay, perfect. And from here, we're going to branch that out into subsets of problems. So here we're going to go to a couple different places. You're probably so confused what's going on. It'll come together at the end. Okay, perfect. So here, let's see, what are other problems that we're seeing within personalized recommendations. Maybe um, the books aren't at my reading level. That can be a great subset. We'll put that there. Ooh, another great one might be hmm, the personalized recommendations. There are There are no solutions in the market for it. That's a great problem to look at as well. Let's see, I'm gonna have a chat open. Do we have anybody who can come up with little subsets of this bigger problem that we have? I'll start, I'll keep thinking as well. I think a good one is, um, yeah, it's hard to find the books that are recommended. It's hard to figure out where to buy them. That's a great one. That's a great one too. Someone said it may not be in the genre that I like. It's hard to go to libraries. That's a fantastic one as well because of COVID. Ooh, all right, we'll do one more here. It may be expensive. Ooh, I like this. Oh, okay. We put books are at my reading level. So maybe we can combine the two. And here we can put books are too expensive. That's a great one. Okay, perfect. So basically what we have here is something I like to call a fishbone diagram. So it looks a little bit like a fish, doesn't it? Let's add a head to it. Maybe we can make it look more like a fish. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so basically while I'm drawing this head, what a fishbone diagram is, is it's able to give you, you know, a solution or a problem broken down into a whole bunch of different problems. Because like I said in the beginning, it might be really tempting to solve the whole global warming crisis. 
but that's not that's not feasible to do in three months so when you figure when you're trying to come up with a problem you need to balance both impact and feasibility and that's exactly what a fishbone diagram can do for you so let's go back to my lead and water device so when i created tetris i wanted to get rid of all the lead in the drinking water but obviously that wasn't possible for an 11 year old to do at that time in a very short period of time so what i instead did is focused on how we can um you know how we can use what we know to help with detection of lead in water i figured out that the smaller subset of the big problem was that a lot of people didn't know that there was lead in their drinking water and that's what i went into solving instead so i have this whiteboard saved um but great i hope that everyone really got a little bit of something out of that i will show my fishbone diagram for Tethys here, which is my lead detection tool. But I saw that there were critical amounts of lead in drinking water, and I broke that up into excess lead in pipes, copper seed buildup, reliance on a single source of water, lack of knowledge and awareness, which is actually what I ended up going with at the end, lead contamination due to the industry, lead in soil organisms, expensive equipment, and lab tests take a lot of time. So I had to really spend some time to break it up and realize how, which subset of the problem do I want to solve? So just let's do a little check-in. Um, maybe for those who I can see, uh, let's, let's, do, let's hold it up on our fingers how confident we are in a problem that we want to solve for Technovation Girls. And phi meaning I know exactly what problem, one meaning I have no clue. I see twos, I see twos, I see, oh, I see a five in there. I see fours, I see a lot of fours. And for you guys who don't have your cameras on, you can also drop that in the chat so I can take a look as well. Um, just drop the numbers one, two, three, four, or five, and we'll see how everyone is doing in their step of the observe process. So I see three is three is four is 2.7, very exact number. Three is three is four, okay, perfect. Two, two is totally fine, four, 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 four. So th these are awesome. So the best place to be right now is a one, two, or three. And anyone who is beyond that, you're already ahead of the game. I would be at a one as well, especially during this step of the process, especially because a, a chunk of your time will be spent on finding a problem to solve, especially because that is such an important step. But I'm super excited to be seeing a lot of threes and fours. It looks like you guys really know what you're doing. And hopefully this little um, live class helped as well. So um, beyond that, I'm going to give you a little bit of work time for yourself. So let's see. Oh, I already skipped the your turn page, but here we go. So I'm going to give you a little bit of work time for yourself. So what I'm going to have you do is if you guys have a notebook or a piece of paper or a whiteboard or something in front of you, or you can even imagine it if you don't feel like writing it out, try to come up with a fishbone diagram for the problem that you are currently solving for Technovation Girls. And then hopefully we can see your number go up or maybe stay the same, but hopefully not down. So. Um, I'm going to give you about five minutes here. I'll get my or I'll get my timer going. Um, Nick, can we have music in the background? Sweet. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I will get that going. Does everyone is everyone clear on what they're doing? We're creating a fishbone diagram for the problem that you guys want to solve for Technovation Girls or for ge in general. So I will get a timer going, and you can feel free to start. Great, right, and that's time. Okay, perfect. Um, great, everyone. So let's have, for those of you with your cameras on um, and who did it on paper, do you guys just want to hold it up so that everyone can see the awesome work that you've done? Awesome. I'm seeing some really cool ones. Perfect. Yes. Awesome. Those look fantastic. Amazing. I'm seeing all sorts of ideas. And see, I, the really exciting thing for me is not all of you guys did it in the form of a fish, which is exactly what I want to see is because, you know, find your own interpretation of a fishbone diagram and which all of you, each and every one of you did, which is super exciting. Um, but yeah, we can put those diagrams down now, but we'll do another check in here. Um, 
honest, let's do a one, two, three, four, or five. How confident do we feel about the problem that we're solving or that we want to solve? Are we at fours, fives, five? Again, one meaning you have no clue, five meaning you're, you know exactly what you're doing. Okay, I'm seeing threes in here. Fours, I'm seeing a lot of fours. I'm seeing threes, 4.5s. Okay, cool. More threes, more threes. Um, 1.5. Okay, so we've grown from one. That's exactly what I want to see. Upward progress. Um, three, 4.5. Okay, perfect. I'm seeing, and for those of you who have your cameras on, maybe hold it up in the air. Um, five. Oh, I see a five in there. Okay, great. Four, four, threes. Okay, perfect. Um, two point one, three, 5.5. All right, we have someone who, who knows exactly what they're doing. Um, Perfect. I see a couple more fives. Ooh, I'm getting a lot of five DMs. Okay, perfect. So awesome, 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 awesome. I'm super excited to see how, um, you know, just drawing that has grown your confidence. Do you think it's grown your confidence? Yes? No, maybe? Yeah, I see a lot of thumbs up and nods. Perfect. Um, that's exactly what I want to see out of this is a lot more of you guys realizing how much you can do with solving problems in society. So that's going to wrap up today's first section of talking about, you know, solving problems in society. But I kind of want to go a little bit into um, something that I think will help all of you in the long run. And what that is, is tips and tricks regarding time management, as well as uh, mentorship, as well as community. So I'm sharing my screen up here again. So I made a little slide that I'm super excited to be here. And so just... You know, just so that I don't take up too much of your time, I'd love to answer some one on one questions as well, since I do see a couple of people with their hands raised and I figured that, you know, the best way to learn is by getting your questions answered too. So if, feel free to drop them in the chat or raise your hand um, and I would love to answer them. And while we're waiting on some answer or on some questions i'm going to shoot up my screen one more time and show you guys the book that i just released so it's called a young innovator's guide to stem and it's a book just for students like you to take an idea from something on paper to something in real life that you can put out in the real world so it's basically a guide and it has super cool interactive workspaces as well as lesson plans that teachers can use and overall it's a very very exciting book to read and um i hope you guys enjoy it just as much as i do but you can go to gitanjalirao.net backslash book and um or forward slash book and you should be able to find everything there about ordering and learning more about it but i'll drop the link in the chat as well um great i see tissia raising her hand um yes yeah, so i had a question so if you wanted like if you had any mistakes you made while doing your projects and how would we like learn from them? How do you learn from them? That's a fantastic question. So my biggest thing is when if you do make mistakes or you do realize that part of the process where you feel like everything is lost, the biggest thing to remember is that Failure is another step to success. So, you know, learn from that failure and know what not to do next time. And that sounds so broad, but that's what that's what I have been doing quite literally is if I fail something, I know, hey, I'm not going back to that one thing. And think about it this way also too. If you fail, then you can create a device or an app that is seven times better than what you thought it could have been. And that's exact seven is a very specific number that I use for no reason. But I think that's it's just think about it in that mindset, realizing that failure will help you succeed in an even stronger way. And another way to really bounce back from failure is knowing that it's okay to take breaks. And whether that it, that means you know taking a break for a month or a year, realize that there's never a hard deadline to solving problems. Like while you know. Tech Innovation Girls does exist and you might have internal deadlines for yourself and, you know, submit something, but continue to work on it and realize that it's OK to take breaks in the middle because your ideas shouldn't be stopped at, you know, a competition deadline. It should go beyond that. It should tackle world problems. And I'm super excited to see that happening. So hopefully that answered your question. 
Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. What about Opal? Opal A31? Maybe that was a mistake. Hi, can I can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Najibul. I'm from Uzbekistan. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. And what did you do when you were tired and it was difficult for you? Yeah, so the first thing that I said about taking breaks still applies here. But secondly, I realized that whatever I'm doing is to look at the big picture. Why am I solving this? What am I doing? What? Why did I decide to do this in the first place? And it always takes me back to realizing that my real goal for this was to solve a problem, not to stress out about you know something that I can't do within a month. So think about it in that mindset, in that different mindset, and also realize that don't stress yourself out to the point where your ideas are just going to deteriorate. You know your ideas and you were, have worked on your ideas longer and better than anyone else. So feel free to really, you know, put that out there and say that, hey, I did this. Even if it might not be the best thing in the world, it is the best thing in the world to each and every one of us. Thank you. And who gave you the motivation of your, uh, your parents or your teachers? Everyone, actually, both my parents and my teachers have given me or have made who I am today, but also along with that, it's students like you guys um, from everywhere who motivate me to make a difference in my community. Just because I see um, if you're getting inspired by me, I see you guys getting inspired by the Internet, and it makes me want to continue doing what I'm doing. So, so you guys are my motivation every single day. Um, Great, so I'm gonna take a break and answer some questions in the chat here and then we'll go back to the hand raised ones. So one is, what do you do when things get Thank awkward you. with your mentor? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is a hard question, especially because it's very prevalent as well. But my biggest thing is communicate, 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 talk to them. Um, a mentorship is strong if it's a friendship. And what that means is it shouldn't be limited to just work-related things. I've had mentors whom I would, like I was doing, you know, I was working with an undergraduate research team at the University of Colorado, Denver, and we were working in the genetics lab and we do all sorts of crazy things. Like we ran around with chicken masks on our head one day. And I think you just need to find that in between, um, allowing you to, you know, do work as well as find those people you can, you know, just talk about daily life with. It shouldn't be an awkward relationship at all. Um, Matthew and your team have two topics that are understandable. How do you choose the best one? That's a great question. And my biggest thing is always, whenever you're stuck at a point, go back to the idea of impact versus feasibility. So does it have a high impact and do they both have high feasibility? And the one that comes out on top is always the one that I will go with, especially because it has like you want to go for the one that's most achievable, but also creates the most impact. Um, great. So let's see one here. How do you get your team to work together when you have different ideas? That's a fantastic question. And it's, it's definitely hard, especially with collaboration. And as someone who, you know, didn't really love collaborating until recently, I think that, you know, being very transparent about it, the biggest thing is compromising is very important. And whether that means compromising on your or on all of your guys's ideas or just one. But I think regarding that as well, you need to focus on the idea that teamwork is a process. It's a process that can get thrown off at some time, but at the end, it always comes together. So find that meeting point where it will come together and focus on that point instead of looking at what do we have to do right now. So maybe like, for example, we'll, we'll take two people, Bob and Sally. Bob has an idea to clean the ocean. Sally has an idea to clean the air. And Bob wants to use something called, like, Bob wants to use nano filters. I forgot the other, Sally, maybe. Sally wants to, um, what does Sally want to do? Bob wants to use nano filters. Sally wants to create a spray that cleans the air. So maybe why Bob and 
Sally come up with is in the future, maybe we'll look at how we can. Okay, so this is this is Bob and Sally's final idea. Bob and Sally will clean the ocean using a nano filter based spray and in the future they will use it to clean the air as well. So that's it. That's just it's as simple as one, two, three, being able to find out a very specific point where you think both can be combined and see how everyone thinks about it and always keep coming back to that point. Basically, is doing an idea dump with your team a good idea? Yes. A very short answer to that is yes. That's actually my brainstorming process, which we didn't get to too much today, but I will get into next week as well. Um, but with the brainstorming process, it is an idea dump. Dump ideas, because that's the most important part of innovation is having as many options as possible. Um, any tips for online collaboration? Tons. So the biggest tip, especially because with COVID-19, it's such a hard process. My biggest, biggest, biggest tip is find time for your for your project and it think about it this way it makes it easier to work as a team when you are online because we have platforms like zoom we have you know phone calls that we can use to and then you don't have to worry too much about meeting up all the time and you can just hop on a zoom call whenever you want and talk about it and my another thing that I really like to do during collaboration as well is reward myself. So take that time to reward yourself as well with collaboration. Play Zoom games. That's what my friends and I do. Watch movies on Zoom. Um, you know, like do what we did a virtual escape room one day. Do things like that when, um, you know, you achieve a deadline or you get through a goal. Go do something fun over online collaboration because that keeps the excitement up, especially when you can't meet in person. Um, let's see, I lost my spot here. Did you want to take a question from Anise? That's how her hand Perfect. Yeah. yeah, let's do Anise. Hello. How did you get the inspiration and motivation to do all what you did? And who helped you during your journey? That's a great question. So my motivation actually just comes from my own personal drive. But on top of that, I have fantastic role models and mentors who have supported me along the way and, you know, basically give me a reason to be here. And I can safely tell you that I would not be here without their support. And um, I think you just talked about role models as well. So to call them out, we have um, Dr. Selene Hernandez Ruiz from Denver Water, who basically brought my idea from bottoms up. Um, Dr. McMurray at the University of Colorado Denver Lab, who I have worked with for years now. And then Dr. Pardee Sabetti from Harvard, who I recently just started working with so I'm super super excited to just have people who support and believe in me and obviously I have to end with the cliche answer and say my parents of course just because they um they've supported me in every step of my journey and I could not see myself anywhere without them so yeah hopefully that answered your question yes thank you a lot yeah of course of course I also see Anshi raising her hand is it okay to quit your idea if it isn't working out? Yes, and that's a very short answer, but yes, it is okay to quit your idea, but don't quit your idea as a whole. Change it. Change it to something, you know, stronger. Change it to something you might be more passionate about or find a way to make it work. Finding a way to make it work might be a little bit tedious, especially because if you don't find that internal drive and passion for it, it kind of gets through a you know, thrown off the rails but if you find out something that you really love to do halfway then change it and because it's the innovation process is up to you you can do whatever you want with it there's no one stopping you so yeah it is totally okay hi hi i have a question yeah go ahead my name is Ibnisa and I'm from Uzbekistan. Actually, I have a lot of questions for you, but I will ask you two of them. I think it's bad questions. First question is, how did you find this problem? Actually, in the world, we have a lot of problems and sometimes people can choose one of them. How yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, that's exactly what the fishbone diagrams that I do break it down for. So there are so many problems, but I start out with the idea of what I'm passionate about, what I find a connection with. And 
write it down and see how I can break it up into problems. And I literally have an innovation notebook going of just problems that I see in society that are all broken up into diagrams just because I'm trying to circle one that I would like to solve. So that's how I solve problems is by finding things in society and breaking it down into the very nitty gritties. And uh, second question is like uh, when you have a project and you're working on it, uh, you have a lot of problems that uh, make you stop on this problem. Like uh, you can't uh, continue your work and what to do to continue your work or to solve these problems that you have or you don't have. Yeah, exactly. So th those problems are just another breaking point where you might think that all is lost, but actually what it is, is it just allows you to reevaluate. But iteration is a natural step of the process. So what I want you to do is go back to the beginning, think about what was the original problem you want to solve and where it went wrong and try to fix that middle portion. And if it's just a solution that doesn't work, then debug it or find another way to improve the solution. If it's a problem that's, you know, not really relevant anymore, then find another subset of the problem. That's why it's so good to have options when you're creating fishbone diagrams and idea dumps because you have so much to pick out of as well. Great, so I'll take a, oh, do you have any more questions or did that answer all of them? No, I have, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Okay, Hi, I'm Alia. Okay. So yeah, I'm go from ahead. Nigeria. Um, so my question is, what about you are not, if you are not having a laptop? Like you can't get a laptop. Can I still be a part of this technovation? And how can I meet friends online? Because my team is just only one person I met and she's not around. She's not somewhere near. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so this might be a question for Rebecca to answer as well, but I know that with problem solving, you know, technology is not the most important thing in the world. A lot of my models started out with cardboard and paper, like pictures on paper. So Rebecca, you want to answer this one? Yes, um, and this is an issue that a lot of girls are facing this year um, because you can't go to community centers that might have computers for you this year, for example. Um, I would say to the one person on your team does need some sort of device because we've checked and checked and there's just no good way to do to actually program your app in any of our four languages that we accept on a phone. Like it's going to be very, very painful. Um, so like one teammate, if one teammate has a laptop or computer, that's great. If you don't have any, um, you know, check with your chapter ambassador, mentor, school, library, any organization around you that might be able to loan you one, um, you know, tell them what you're doing and then maybe they can have a program where they can like lend it to you for these three months. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys, for your questions and um, definitely feel free to keep dropping them in the chat and I will also be here next week to answer more of your questions if you'd like to hop on as well. But overall, thank you so much for coming and I hope you learned a little something today. But yeah, take it away, Nick. Alrighty. Um, well, first off, I'd like everyone to virtually give Anjali a round of applause because that was a wonderful session. I learned a whole lot. I hope you guys too. Thank you so much. And of course, you guys obviously still have a ton of questions for her. And what did she say? She'll be here next week. So here are the live classes again. Be sure to sign up. We'll um, drop a link in the chat on where to register, but the same place you registered the first time. Anjali will be here again next week. You'll get to hang out with her some more and learn more from her great insight. Um, yeah, but really just thank you all for coming. I hope you guys learned a lot. So your homework is if you haven't found a mentor yet and are still interested, try to find a mentor, meet with your mentor, meet with your team and start collaborating about what problem you're going to focus on.